Hello, my name is John Michaelos with Advent Health's Digestive Health and Surgery Institute. With September being Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, we thought it would be important to sit down and have a conversation with some of the leading experts in the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. So with that, I will go ahead and introduce our experts we have with us here today. Uh, Dr. Christopher Russell, a board certified urologist with Advent Health Medical Group, and Dr. Vipul Patel, a, our medical director for urologic cancer with Advent Health's Cancer Institute. So thank you both for taking the time for this important discussion today and kind of unpacking this a little bit for us. Absolutely. Thanks for having Welcome. Us. And so Dr. Russell, we'll start with you and just simply how common is prostate cancer? Yeah, prostate cancer is the most common cancer diagnosis in men, excluding skin cancer, and it's the second most common cause of uh, cancer-related uh, mortality. And are there certain people who are more at risk than others for developing prostate cancer? Yeah, absolutely. The number one risk factor for prostate cancer is, is age, and that's what kind of defines most of our screening guidelines. Okay. Um, but there definitely are certain populations that are at higher risk than others, uh, the big ones being African-American ethnicity, as well as patients that have a strong family history. And so that's a family history of prostate cancer in a first degree relative. So brother, father, um, son, um, or um, people that have a strong family history of certain types of, of other GI malignancies, ovarian cancers, breast cancer, GI cancer. Gotcha. And so you mentioned age. What What is that age that you that you should start getting screened? Yeah, so it really depends on, on um, a number of different factors. The vast majority of um, people will start screening at uh, the latest between the age of 55 and 69. And okay. that's per our AUA guidelines, uh, average risk guys, we screen 55 to 69. There is some evidence that beginning screening a little bit earlier, sometimes around the age of 45, um, there is some benefit to that. Mm -hmm. And in high risk populations, we typically begin screening uh, between the ages of 40 and, and uh, around the age of 40 to 45. Okay, and so if you, watching at home, if you meet any of those kind of risk factors, this next section is especially important because yeah. we mentioned screening. That's kind of, the, the, for any cancer, that's one of the most important things. And so what should men know about prostate cancer screening? Yeah, the most common form of screening that we use is a two-part evaluation. So it's a rectal exam to feel the prostate, um, as well as a blood test called PSA. Okay. Uh, relatively easy, straightforward, uh, gives us a lot of information in terms of deciding you know, who needs a little bit more workup moving forward. But uh, definitely, you know, any guy that, that is, is high risk, 40 to, uh, over the age of 40, definitely consult your doctor. Um, all guys between the age of 55 and 69 um, certainly um, you know, look into screening. Gotcha. So whenever we hear conversations around prostate cancer and screens, we always hear PSA. Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of unpack a little bit about what exactly that is? Yeah, so PSA is an enzyme that's made by both normal prostate tissue as well as prostate cancer. Uh, prostate cancer cells tend to be a little bit leakier per se, and so patients that have prostate cancer tend to have higher levels of PSA in their blood. Uh, there are other things, benign conditions that raise the PSA, so inflammation, infections, trauma, um, but we use it as a way to kind of, uh, like the way I describe it is a, is a red flag for, for more screening, so mm -hmm. for biopsy or imaging, um, and it's just a, just a simple blood test. Gotcha. And so jumping over to you, Dr. Patel, he mentioned the red flag goes up if you do have an elevated PSA or the DRE kind of comes back abnormal. What would the next steps be if someone were to come to you with those symptoms? Well, first we would actually, if it's a consult, we would reevaluate them. Mm -hmm. uh, I prefer to do my own exam, check a new PSA. If either is abnormal and they fit the criteria for someone who's at risk for prostate cancer, mm -hmm. then imaging is an option. Okay. Um, doing an MRI of the prostate is becoming more common. There are also other blood tests, something called 4K is very used to kind of screen out those guys who might have a higher risk for prostate cancer, malignancy at a higher level versus something at a lower level of malignancy. So there are a lot of things we do first. Mm -hmm. If there are questions about that are serious about whether this guy really has prostate cancer, the ultimate is to biopsy the prostate. Gotcha. And most of those these days are done with MRI and ultrasound guidance using targeting. Okay. Yeah. And so if somebody is unfortunately found to have prostate cancer, what would that initial that first visit look like at your office? Yeah, most of my patients um, are diagnosed elsewhere and come to us. Okay. Uh, we have one of the more well-known institutions in the world for performing this surgery. Uh, we've performed uh, more than 15,000 cases now. So most of these patients come with a diagnosis. But we find that their level of education is variable. So we actually mm -hmm. spend most of our time educating them, finding out what they have, giving them their risk factors, all the different options. 
and you know, obviously showing empathy for their condition. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a family diagnosis. Yeah. And so we spend a lot of time educating the patient so that when they leave, they have an educated decision to make. Sure. Yeah. And from there, when they go towards their treatment options, and what would those be for the, uh, the average patient with prostate cancer? We see some of the most complicated cases in the world sent to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, for some patients who are really low risk and you know older, active surveillance. We don't do anything. Uh, that's more and more common. Mm -hmm. uh, for younger patients, people with intermediate high risk disease, people who are going to have a life expectancy of over 10 years, mm -hmm. they're often good candidates for surgery. And that's why they often are sent to us. Mm -hmm. um, there are other patients that may need something in between. You know, older patients, shorter life expectancy, maybe radiation therapy, maybe focal therapy. So we go through all of this with the patient and then ultimately we, together we make the decision that's right for them. Sure. Yeah. And so if robotic surgery is chosen, what should somebody look for in their surgeon? Yeah, I think, you know, data. Yeah. That's the key. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you want to go someone who has a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, it always helps to see if they've published data. Sure. You know, that's very important. So. Those are probably two of the most important things. You also want to go to an institution that you're comfortable with, and you know that you're not only going to get good care in surgery, but also around surgery. So you want to go to a team mm -hmm. that is very experienced and has a very good reputation for taking care of the patient. Yeah, which yeah. we luckily do have here at, yeah. at Advent Health. Um, and so with robotic surgery, it's something that maybe not a lot of people know too much about, but what are some of those benefits for patients, spe specifically to a prostate surgery uh, with using robotics. Yeah, you know, when I when I trained, we used to do it the old-fashioned way with a big cut, and often those patients lost a lot of blood and had a lot of pain. And robotic surgery is nice in that it is relatively quick. Uh, blood loss is low. Transfusion is very uncommon. These days, patients are going home same day or or next day early. Mm -hmm. So minimal pain, faster recovery. But I think the big three are actually better which is cancer, continent, sexual function. Mm -hmm. You know, other than the immediate surgery part, which is better with minimally invasive surgery, the key is are the outcomes better? And I think they are. Sure. Uh, we have more experience and these patients tend to do better. Yeah, and yeah. you mentioned some of them, but so there are some like post-surgery, um, like considerations or concerns that some patients might have, which I know you said robotic surgery helps to mitigate a little bit, but what are some of those that they should talk through with their urologist or their surgeon yeah. prior to having surgery? Yeah, a lot of it's what you start with. You know, if a patient has a bad cancer going in, their outcomes are probably going to be worse than someone who's young who has a small cancer. So mm -hmm. what you're working with. Uh, number one is cancer control. You have to pick what's best for your cancer because that's the ultimate thing that can end everything. Uh, then we talk about continence, leakage of urine. Um, I think these days with robotic surgery, those levels are much better and much improved for patients sexual function recovery. I think that's the one where robotic surgery has made a big difference. It's more precise, you have better vision, you have better control. And so as long as the surgeon operating on you has good experience and good outcomes, they should have a good experience overall and hopefully a good outcome as long as their cancer control is good. Sure. Yeah. And so hopefully that's not some, some, something anybody ever has to do or consider, but we do luckily have those resources here at Advent Health for those patients. And so with that, one, qu one final question for each of you guys, and I have a feeling it may be the same answer, but Dr. Russell, we'll start with you. What would be your main takeaway for men this Prostate Cancer Awareness Month? Yeah, it's, it's really, you know, don't be intimidated. If you are between the ages of 55 and 69, or you are fit into that high risk population and you are over the age of 40, you know, go see your doctor, get screened. It's a really easy evaluation. It takes 30 seconds um, and it really can make all the difference. Find, identifying prostate cancer early while it's localized to the prostate can, can you know, allow us to provide, you know, treatments uh, where they are more efficacious both from a cancer control perspective and, and like Dr. Patel said, really be able to provide those in a way that we have optimal um, recovery of all of the, the other uh, things that go along with surgery, so mm -hmm. continence, sexual function, um, and really open the door for alternative therapies as well um, if patients do meet those criteria. So yeah. go out, get screened, um, don't be scared, don't be intimidated. Um. Yeah, and Dr. Patel, anything to add? Yeah, I think you have to realize you're, you're not alone in this yeah. journey, it's a, it's a family journey. There are millions of men either who've had or do have prostate cancer currently. And so 
you know, what I would say to them is, yeah, don't be scared. Be comfortable talking about it. I think there's a lot of taboo around prostate cancer, mm -hmm. but I think it's getting better. Talk to your physician, talk to your friends, talk to your family, and, and don't be scared about it. Yeah, and it's one of those things that for any of you watching at home, if you have any additional questions for either of our experts here or would like to get in touch with any of our experts here at Advent Health, um, just like you would with any like with your car, you get it tuned up. We would really encourage you to, you do that every year, do this every year. It's one, something to sit that's really important to just get screened. And so we'd encourage you to visit the link in the description of this video or to scheduleyourtuneup.com in order to learn more. And thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you.